I mean, all the puppets in Running Wild are, are nearly life size, if not slightly larger than life size in some uh, cases. Um, they range from uh, one puppeteer, so all the baby orangutans have one puppeteer each. All the adult orangutans have two puppeteers. The tiger has three puppeteers, and you know, the elephant has four. So ev every single puppet is sort of operated in a different way. They're probably the most naturalistic in terms of aesthetic puppets that we've made. Um, but that said, they still have an abstract quality in that uh, most of them have an element of their body missing. So the orangutans don't actually have legs. So we're hoping the audience will fill in that part with, with, with their imaginations. I think we always approach any sort of puppet character, especially when it's an animal, uh, by sort of thinking about where its emotional indicators are. So uh, ear flicks, tail swishes, uh, its breath, what the elephant does with its trunk, and sort of working out where the articulation points need to be um, for, the, for the kind of emotional uh, expression of the character. So the tiger, he's, he's sort of the first time I think we've done a fully formed four-legged animal puppet with three puppeteers. Um, and we had lots of conversations about does it have articulated legs or are they solid? Um, and I think we, it was quite a breakthrough to sort of have sort of um, bungee, really thick elastic in its joints. So the tiger's legs want to be straight. They want to sort of ping out, as you look like that. Yeah, they want to be sort of straight. But when you press into them on the ground, they can bend because the elastic gives. Then as you walk forward and take a step, they can whoop, straighten again. So it gives you that sort of cat suppleness. Um, while still actually not having to control it by the feet, you can be right, right, right at the top of the leg. Um, so the main threats to Sumatran tigers in the wild are the same threats that um, threaten many species across the tropics. Um, and these are associated with the loss of habitat, um, mainly due to the unsustainable expansion of industrial activities such as agriculture, um, mining, um, expansion of rubber plantations, tree plantations such as acacia, but in particular Indonesia, in Indonesia associated with the expansion of oil palm plantations. So palm oil has many, many uses and it's in many of the products that we use every single day. So it's estimated that it's in around half of all packaged food products found in supermarkets. So it can be found in biscuits, bread, chocolate, um, but it can also be found in cosmetics, so in lipsticks and other makeup and in cleaning detergents. Um, so we all have a role to play as consumers in supporting more sustainable production and we can do this by looking for RSPO certified sustainable palm oil which you can see with the RSPO label on products that you can find in supermarkets. Um, a really exciting project that we've just launched in South Sumatra and it's quite an inno innovative project is a, um, a pilot that we've launched with the governor of South Sumatra and this partnership brings together the government in Indonesia, communities, other NGOs and other conservation organisations to develop a sustainable landscape model for a particular region of South Sumatra, which is a real stronghold for some of the remaining Sumatran tigers. And as part of this project, we'll be working more and more with, with palm oil companies to encourage them to better manage the land that's under their stewardship and to manage their conservation areas, ensure that there are habitat corridors for tigers to use when they're moving through plantations. So there's a recent report which said there were between sort of 300 and 400 left in the wild, um, but some estimates are much lower and say there are as little as 250 in the island of Sumatra. Um, they're classified as critically endangered on the IUCN red list. But through the efforts of organisations like ZSL in Indonesia and many other conservation organisations who are working with the government on awareness raising and education, on law enforcement to address threats such as poaching and degradation of protected areas, and through our work with the palm oil industry, I think the future is looking brighter.